This is medium format photography on a full frame camera. And this is an introduction on how I'm able to get a real medium format image onto a full frame sensor, which is the cheapest way into digital medium format photography without having to buy a separate specialized camera for it. So all you need is a 35 millimeter full frame camera, which I am recording on now. Um, this Keypon Bavise medium format 0.7 times focal reducer, aka speed booster, but I just call it a focal reducer, um, and compatible medium format lenses. And I mean compatible as in these come in different um, in different lens mounts for different medium format lenses, which I have a huge arsenal of Pentax medium format lenses with my favorite of the two being the 55 f2.8 and the 150 f3.5. Now in between the two, uh, I would say the equivalent focal length between both would be the 55 is around 38 millimeters. The 105 would give me around, I mean, the 150 would give me about a 105. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. <laughs> um, you'll need a mirrorless camera because mirrorless allows you to adapt many different lens mounts, uh, lens mount adapters onto the camera because the camera has a shorter flange distance. Um, an electronic viewfinder would also be a bonus because this is a manual focus rig. So this is manual only. There's no electric contacts on this adapter. Um, and focus peaking helps to achieve focus. Uh, my two mirrorless cameras of choice is the Canon EOS R and the Sigma FP. And I'm recording on the EOS R at the moment. Um, I much prefer the Canon because of an EVF, mechanical shutter, better ergonomics. So like my first rodeo with using this adapter, I've adapted it onto my Sigma FP. And I've used that for a while and that was my only mirrorless camera. I was using DSLRs up until about a week ago. And one of my main selling points for going with a mirrorless SLR camera is because of mechanical shutter, EVF, and all the other different photocentric features that it would offer me with this rig. You need the focal reducer because this allows you to squeeze the larger image circle of medium format lenses onto a smaller sensor, such as a full frame sensor, and also adds one stop of light. By squeezing the entirety of a larger image circle onto a smaller area, it magnifies the intensity of light in that particular space. This is what I call the opposite of using a 1.4x teleconverter. This is literally the opposite of a teleconverter, but the opposite of a 1.4x teleconverter. My adapter of choice, of course, I went over this already, is the Pentax 645 to Leica M. Now, the reason why I went with Leica M is because the Leica M mirrorless mount has well, one of the longer flange distances of, of, of a lot of mirrorless camera mounts. And this allows you to be able to adapt this onto L mount. I put this on my L mount FP and then my RF mount Canon. Um, I could put this on a Sony. I could put this on a Nikon. And of course I could put this on M mount cameras as well, which a lot of, uh, uh, there are certain cinema cameras that are M mount. So this would be great. So if you want just one mount, I will go with M mount. However, I do have one complaint and I don't know if this is just the adapters that I choose to adapt onto the back of the M mount, uh, but this is a RF adapter, an M mount to RF adapter. And there's a lot of play. So like, so it doesn't really, fit that good. So if you want a, an adapter that doesn't have a lot of play, I would just recommend going with, you know, the native adapter that you would need. 
or I would just take the risk. Um, I use this mostly for photography, um, but I do use it for some video. I'm not using it right now. So as of as of the time of writing this, um, the lenses that I have of choice would be the 55, the Pentax uh, SMC A version. I went with the A versions because it is a lot less expensive to buy the manual focus only instead of the autofocus versions. And I still don't get autofocus anyway. So um, the 55 F28, the 153.5, which is here. Um, I found this one on Facebook Marketplace. This is the 35 3.5. Um, and this would be my uh, one of my more expensive ones of the lenses. And then I have the 200 millimeter f4, which is my most hated lens of all of them. And it's because the, the, the vignetting is extremely bad with or without the lens hood on, even if I do a four by three crop. And then some of the lenses I really don't like using that all that much over my primes. Uh, this is my 45 to 85 zoom f4.5. And then I have the, the 80 to 160 4.5 zoom and um, like later on the lenses that I plan to acquire would be the 45 which is probably one of my last ones because I find that 45 you know it 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 fits too closely to my other two lenses which is my 55 and my 35 but the 75 would be the one that I would want the most that should have been the one that I bought first and something told me to buy that one first because I'm so used to that 50 millimeter angle of view, but you know, by using a 55 millimeter lens, it gives me some weird focal length that I'm not quite used to, which is a 38, 39. Um, and that's closer to a 35 millimeter field of view. And I already don't like 35 millimeter lenses that much. I, I mean, I use them Every now and then with 35 millimeter lenses are not necessarily what I would prefer for photography. However, I do love using them for video. I don't know why, like for photography, it's just not for me, but for video, if I could have only one lens, if I, if, if I could have only one prime lens, I would go with a 35. Um, the 120 macro, I would love to have that one first, but of course not before the 75. And the 300 millimeter, I would love to have that one. Of course, I'd probably love to have them in the order of 75, 120, 300, and then 45. Now, I've done the math and science regarding equivalent sensor size, crop factor of lenses, and equivalent aperture. And like one of the things that I really, really want to talk about in this video because I will make more videos of the other lenses that I do have, but I'll give you an example of, of one of my lenses that I do want to show you an example of. But in this video, I mainly want to talk about equivalent sensor size. So what you have to do uh, to know the equivalent sensor size, you would have to do, like you would have to do the crop factor in reverse. So like, let's say this was a one, uh, no, let's say this was a, a 0 0.7 times um, crop factor uh, to find the equivalent sensor size, you would have to actually do that in reverse by multiplying your sensor size length and height by 1.4. So don't ask me how I come up with that number. It took a whole lot of playing around. I'm no mathematician by any means it took a lot of playing around before i came up with that number and i found that to be very 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 consistent so your equivalent sensor size in three by two format which is the photo side of the camera using a full width of a full frame sensor your equivalent sensor size would be 51 by 34 instead of 36 by 24 
and 16 by 9, instead of it being 36 by 20, it would be 51 by 28. So we can kind of see where we're going with there. Um, and reference, so I compared this camera to a 645 uh, film camera and also to a 645 digital camera. And just for laughs and giggles, I also I also went and measured the Alexa 65 um, and then also APS-C. I have a chart that I'm going to show you um, just so that you can get a better idea of where I'm going with. So like, let's say the Pentax 645Z, that camera is a 44 by 33. So we get more angle of view with this rig than we would get with just going with a, you know, one of the current, um, you know, like one of the current, um, um, digital medium format cameras such as the GFX and the 645Z or the X1D. So those all have the same 44 by 33 sensor and that's in 4 by 3 format. And this expands our horizons to 3 by 2 and it still gives us more to work with. Slightly more to work with on the vertical, just one millimeter and then far more to work with on the horizontal. Also compare this to 645 film. It's a lot smaller than 645 film, but not by much. And I also compared it to the Alexa 65. It's a lot larger. Well, it's larger going uh, vertical, but a little smaller going horizontal. And I also compared it to just using uh, the full frame uh, 35 millimeter mode and it's it's extremely larger I mean it gives you an extreme amount of extra field of view to work with at the same focal length so I'm gonna show you one example and like I said this video is just an introduction because I have a lot of lenses to test out I have a lot of scenarios to test all of these out with so this series is not gonna be done for a very 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 long time but I'm just going to show you an example between a 50 millimeter F1.8 at F2.8 on a full frame camera in standard full frame mode and a 55 millimeter F2.8 at F2.8 in medium format mode. And I'll show you how even the slightly longer 55 still gives you far more angle of view than a shorter 50 millimeter um, on, you know, just the standard uh, one to one crop factor. Now, as you can see in my sample shots here, both the 55 millimeter on the focal reducer and the 50 millimeter 1.8 on no focal reducer are both set at F2.8, but the 55 has a brighter image because of the focal reducer, it adds one stop of brightness. So it has an equivalent aperture of about F2 as far as brightness goes. And as you can see, the bokeh does not change the foreground, the background compression or anything like that does not change. The only thing that changes is the angle of view and the brightness. Now, I would probably be able to get more out of focus area on the medium format lens if I were to compose my image to look identical to the 50 millimeter 1.8, but I would have to literally get up a whole lot closer, which is why the medium format look tends to have far more out of focus area uh, for a given aperture. Uh, for a comparable aperture on a full frame lens is because with you having more angle of view at the same focal length, you have to sometimes compose your images up a lot closer if you want identical framing as you would have if you were to use a 50 millimeter um, lens or any full frame lens or any comparable full frame lens on a full frame camera with no uh, focal reducer. Um, 
and yeah, that's about it. I'm sure. I'm sure you. I'm sure you probably noticed uh, the bokeh doesn't change, but the angle of view does, and also the brightness as well. And that's and that's and that's all due to that focal reducer there. Now, one more thing that I do want to go over as far as this goes is the price of this adapter. Now, the price of this adapter, I believe, is currently. Let's see, because I bought mine for about. 450. I got this for about 450 uh, used. I bought this used and it was like one of the only used ones that popped up that fit my camera uh, because the adapter is not that popular, but I believe at the time of purchasing this, it was around 699, but I can, uh, I can double check that just to be sure. Ooh, actually the adapter actually went up in price. This adapter was $6.99. It went up in price to $7.99. So for me to get this for $4.50, that's kind of a steal. Um, and plus, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. But uh, before you buy an adapter, I recommend you doing your research on what medium format lenses you would want to use this on. Because once you spend that much on an adapter, like, I mean, that's the price of like a used camera, you know what I mean? But it's still significantly cheaper than actually buying a separate medium format camera. Significantly cheaper. Like a Pentax 645Z is still a little over three grand and that camera does almost nothing but take really high quality pictures. And I'll say this again, it does almost nothing but take real high quality pictures. The other cameras, the more mirrorless models, they do a little bit more, but they're still limited by the larger size of the sensor because of, um, you know, like the larger size of the sensor, it brings, you know, issues that are unforeseen, such as like, like a rolling shutter if you're doing video. Um, a lot of them have issues with the maximum shutter that you're able to use because of the size of the uh, shutter, um, price, price of lenses. Um, I mean, I, I mean, you name it. I mean, frames per second. However, I probably wouldn't use this in a high frame per second setting anyway. Most of my shots are more slow paced. So I find that even though it's manual focus only, most medium format cameras are not known for good autofocus anyway. So I find that, you know, just using focus peaking doesn't necessarily get in my way of me being able to get the shot that I need in medium format, which is more portraits or landscape. One of the things that a lot of videos about this particular adapter did not cover is there was a tripod foot that went right at the bottom and it was real big and annoying looking and I always wanted to know if that thing come out and no video, um, no information on the internet, not even the website itself would address whether or not that tripod foot was able to come out. And yes, that annoying tripod foot that goes right here at the bottom does come off. However, over the year I've had this thing, I lost it. So I can't show you in the video because I don't have it anymore. <laughs> but I did, I did want to go over that and cover that. And the next lens that I'll review, like the next thing that I'll go over is me using this 150. Now this 150 would be one of my more favorite ones. So I'm going to review this next in the next video, but I do want to say thank you for watching. I am going to put up some samples just for you to be able to see some of the images that I have gotten so far with this adapter and a lot of, you know, different lenses with uh, most of them being from the 35, the 55 and the 150. But like I said, the 200 and the two zooms are like my least are like my least favorite of the bunch. And I'll explain why in later videos. Uh, but like I said, if you would like to keep up with these videos, please like and subscribe so that you can receive updates. And again, thank you for watching.